Hello, friends. Hi, welcome to my channel. This is Kim. We're back again. I, the last video, I started this painting. We're painting on newsprint. Newsprint. What I do, and we had to let it dry, and we're coming back for the second part. If you missed the first part, you can go right back. I'll have it linked in the description box. But what we're doing, we put gesso on and then paint. And so now what I'm doing is I am taking some uh, just regular tape. And I'm taping the back and the front because with the paint and the gesso, it, it wants to curl up here. And I don't want it to do that. So I'll just give us some more texture. Um, I've got strips cut and what we'll do that'll reinforce it and we'll still be able to tear it we're just we're just and this is just for play this is all for play if you're just starting out um, and you haven't seen the other video but you want to um, start painting let me tell you what we've got going you just need some newsprint whatever kind you want to use um, we've got some uh, I'm using some craft paints and you know I've got a few goldens on my palette that I'll show you. Um, you'll need some water, of course, for your brushes. Any brushes you want to use. This time, of course, we're taping it because we've already um, gessoed the one side and I'm going to tape this. Um, you will need maybe a, a, a brayer. I used a couple different kinds of brayers. Uh, this is a little softer. And then this is the one that you use with um, the jelly plates. Um, I said stencils, the stencils, brushes. Um, I've got a few funky tools that I just, with experimentation that I use, um, sticks and I can, I can do another video on making these if you want. Um, but this is a kind of a fun tool to use. This is fun in putting the paint on palette knife, uh, some of the spatulas by Catalyst, just regular brushes, any old brushes you want. And uh, I like to use a skewer or a stick. This is just a dowel um, to make, you know, paint dots to give it some different, different dimension, different textures. That's what makes your, your paper or your painting, um, interesting is having the differences and the contrast. So I've got this little fan brush that I might put some little uh, marks on there with. And um, oh, if you have any of these um, markers, I think this was a Liquitex and then I put paint in it and you can make different shapes or write, do some writing on your paper. Oh, and you may want a, a rag to wipe your hands with or a paper towel. And I have, this time I'm gonna use some of these. Um, this is a uh, liquid watercolor. And then I have a couple, this, this one is by, these are by um, Tracy Batista. Um, when she first started making her inks and watercolors and that, um, I got some, and so those, and then, uh, I have some Dr. P.H. Martin's, uh, watercolor. So it's just whatever you have, you know, if you want to do it all in acrylics, if you want to use woody pencils or, 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 um, you know, oil pastels, I mean, whatever you really, um, water, um, water soluble uh, things if you want to use that. I just am using these because they're what's on my table today. So let's go ahead and finish getting this paint, this taped, so it'll be one piece. That way it will not come sliding around like it did the last time. I remember um, Donna that used to do Wednesdays. She used to put a, a video out. I cannot think of her name. Um, she's in South Carolina. 
and now she's doing a lot of fine art. Um, I'm sure you know who I'm talking about. I'm sorry, forgive me, I cannot think of her last name, Donna. Um, she was a school teacher, and then she started painting, and she's very been very successful at selling in her art and classes. Anyways, um, she would put tape. I saw her put tape on in her journals, when she, the journals that she would make uh, before she would do the mixed media inside the journals. So that's where I picked up that years ago. And then the back. So as long as it's sticking, we don't have to. I put some on the back on this one. I've got some paint already on the palette. I've got some white uh, gesso just for white for mixing. Uh, I've got black. I've got some blue cyan and just another blue from my, I don't know what color that is. That's a Cayman blue just for this multi-surface folk art. And, you know, you don't have to use um, specialty paints with this because... It's just on the newspaper, and it's just, it's not a, a, a piece you're going to sell. It's to just have fun and experiment and just have a good time with. Make shapes, fill in space, and do layers. This is a more of a, um, what do you, what do I want to say? A mental health painting, you know, take the time for yourself and just put some paint down, you know, it's, it's newspaper. And the other thing is you may find that you're a fantastic painter. You may have abilities and things you don't know. They they say anybody can learn to paint. It's just a matter of doing it on a regular basis. Now me, I I love to just push the paint around. Just feeling it glide. Mixing the colors. Is that in frame? Yes. It's really hard to do on, <laughs> on camera. Uh, I don't feel that I'm myself at all. I'm not used to it yet. Okay. Let's do some darker dots with this here. Of course, it'll all get filled in. The thing I would say is you, you want contrast and differences in anything that you're putting together because that's what draws the eye. The value of the color on what we call a grayscale, you know, from dark to light. And one way you can see if you're getting that out of your painting is by stopping in the middle and just taking a picture of it and then using the setting on your camera, you probably have a setting if you, have, you can take pictures, um, and changing it to black and white, and you'll see right away the what's, what's darker and what's lighter, if you have enough. Maybe it's concentrated dark on one side and light on the other. You want to push the focus. And see, I'm not really cleaning my brush out either for this. I mean, I might at some point, but not today because I'm just covering up the white. And I'm experimenting. I'm seeing what I like, what I, what, where my hand wants to go, where, what does it want to do.
blue and orange are complementary, so I always like those together myself. But you use the colors that you like when you put your colors out. Okay, what about stencils? Now I have a few just old stencils here. And maybe we'll try this one here. I'm just going to share real quick my stencil, what I keep them in. I think this is a great thing for organizing them. It's a, I bought it online. It comes with a whole kit of these plastic sort of uh, packs. And here I can fit like tons of them. And I find that if they're like this, at least I'll put them back in and there's folders to put it in. And then I, I use them more. You know, I, don't, I really haven't used these in a while, but we're going to get them out today and go for it. This is a great one right here. You can put stickers in there, you can put all kinds of things. So, let's see if you can see that one. Let's see what this does. I think I'll try this and see what kind of a it will give a flat surface to stencil. Uh, I'm not so sure about that. Looks more like it's going on the stencil. Yep. Oops. Let's do this. At least get the reverse on there. Okay, let's try this one. Let me grab a heavier, a, a stiffer brush, really quickly, a stiffer brush. Here we go. This is it. I think this will work out better. If I can keep from. I think the less paint you have on your brush when you're stenciling, the better it is. I'm sure there's lots of ways to put paint through a stencil. I like when it's, let's get a close up of that. I like when it is some darker and some lighter, personally. Okay, let me, oh, now I'm painting my camera. Okay, you may want to wear an apron too. I know I, I do because I'm very messy when I do this. It's extremely messy, and I like to kind of um, round out the whole. This, this is one piece. We won't necessarily use it in one piece, but I like to put. If I'm putting this design here, I want to put it in probably three to five other places and. and just let it do its own thing. You know, if you just put it in one place, your eye is more drawn to that one place or two places, but something about the, the odd numbers is a good design element. Okay, let's see, that kind of pushes that back a little bit. Okay, let's go with the white and use the same stencil and see how we like that. 
Ooh, too much paint. Great, and I'm getting like a gray. Okay. Right in there. It would have been nice to have a dark background. That would look good on the uh, purpley, darker purple there. Okay, let's put this over here. So I hope y'all are doing well today, having a nice day. We've had sunshine for the past three days, which is always fantastic, in my opinion. Um, but it sort of went all the way from... From... <laughs> 40s and 50s to 70s and 80s, which is, <laughs> you know, different. And even though we're in the south and it is warmer here at this time of year, you know, 60s, 70s, 85 is pretty extreme, even for us. I think we may have hit a high. I, didn't, I don't know exactly, but so... Hope you're staying cool or comfortable. Okay, let's see. So you have to have a really good contrast for a stencil to work well. Otherwise, it's just going to be tone on tone, which is nice. But with a stencil, you want it to show up. I may have too much paint on here. Let's see what this does. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we're not going for, like I say, we are, there's no perfection here. There's no judgment. Uh, it's just painting some newspaper to see what our stencils do, what our paint does, what happens when you put this color on that color, what happens when you use this brush with this stencil. And you'll find when you do that, then when you go back next time, you're more confident. You want to, and you want to paint. Um, my In my painting, it's like they're my babies. I mean, obviously, I don't care about the painting like I do my own children, but, but they are sort of your own creations. And I get excited, like, when I wait for my paint to dry and I wake up the next morning, so I'll paint maybe into the evening and and wait for it to dry um and i'm excited to see what what is left either on the canvas or the page or the paper or the journal so that i turned over there was a lot of paint on that and i wanted to see what that would do and that is just as fun as the other let's do a close-up of that I was just turning that one over. So, it's pretty cool. And then if you don't like it, you can always roll her over it. One of the other things is, like, this is the roll, the paint that got on the roller. So I want to roll into this and do, get this to dry faster. When your paint, this paint was a little thicker, so, and I want it to dry, so we can move on with our painting episode here. And then you just spread your paint out with your roller. Oops, there's my pipette. Okay. So what we're going to do now is go ahead and use some of this liquid watercolor and I don't mind now if if, if you're using watercolor or um, water soluble um, paints or pencils or any of that you may want to put it on last because it the next layer will tend to you know move it now you can um, let's hold this up high kind of splatter that What you can do is, once it's dry, 
you can put some uh, matte medium on it very, very, very gently. I've had it to work for me by doing it very gently with a very soft brush um, and doing it very, um, just real gingerly. Because if you rub it too much, what's going to happen is the water soluble. And then I'm just putting a little bit of my paint water in there. I've had these for two or three years so that and that was one of my favorite colors so I've used it a lot but um let's see let's go with this brush yeah I like that color I like that color better than the gold underneath it. This is just a second layer we're putting on. Some of it's a and ended up being a first layer. So just to you cover, cover, cover. And I have several, um, you can do splats. You can put it in there and fun to do that. Now when you do something like this and you're painting it just for the fun of testing your paints and stuff, you don't have to follow necessarily the rules as, you know, like you would for painting or something you were going to sell to someone. And that's how you experiment and learn. I want to encourage you to just have fun with it. Okay, let's see this color. This was a beautiful color she made. It's like a navy to get some darker in there. We're doing a pipette. Okay, here it is. And see, I get it out. When I'm not using a brush to watercolor, I just get it out like this. And then you can drop it. Yeah, that's a beautiful color. Especially with that orange. But you do want to clean out your pipette if, if you're intending to use it again with different colors. Okay. After you're finished with the, your layers, it's kind of fun to go in with either Bombay India ink um, with white and do some more mark making or, um, you know, a, like a, a nib pen, something like that. I've got some black on this. And I'm just going to put some bigger... So we need to cover this paint here too. Or the tape rather. Also remember, if you don't, you know, if you're like, what, what are you doing? Put that black all over everything. You know, you're covering up the colors you like. <laughs> if you're thinking that, you can go back over it. Like when this dries, you'll just say, you'll, you will merely find a brush, find some white gesso or a color and, you know, put your, put your color down that you like. It's just paint. Let's see. Okay. 
And we'll have to do another video of the third one because this will have to dry. And I, I mean, I usually do put at least four layers on. So this is really only two. And you see, we don't have things. We don't have it covered up. I'd like to put some more textured from the stencils. I start painting and I think about what I'm painting. And I don't, I can't talk. That's why I can't do this. I go in a zone. When I paint alone, it's totally like a zone for me. It's so relaxing. So, and I mean, it sure beats therapy or, you know, taking medication or, you know, a lot of other things I could do to harm my body in some way or the other. But painting is really very therapeutic. And not that I'm saying it's bad if somebody else does that. I'm just saying... For me, I found a zone I can go in, and it doesn't hurt anybody, including myself. And sometimes the results are pretty nice. I don't know about this. I see I got a gray on my. I got a gray on my um, brush, so I wanted to kind of move it around a little bit because that's a good sort of a darker level mid-tone because most of my paint is a mid-tone level. Uh, I find that's just how I roll. I don't know why. It's just how it kind of turns out. I don't do it on purpose because I know that that it's orange is getting a little muted, but that's okay. We can go back over it. Well, folks, we're getting at 27, almost 30 minutes here, and I think this paint needs to dry before I put on any more. We're just kind of mixing it around. And uh, if you like this video, hey, give me a thumbs up. Give me, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up, and we'll come back and do some more. Trust me, this, you go through an ugly stage with every painting. You go through an ugly stage, and um, sometimes, though, you need muted colors to tone down some of the bright colors that you have. So we'll just take it from here. I appreciate y'all watching. I hope you have an awesome day and um, give me a thumbs up and subscribe and just keep painting.